uh, my work uh, in Arjun's work was uh, used to be a part of rap engine for exploration as well. So basically, uh, if we look at the first indexes, so they are very useful for if you have just text data, but it's less convenient if you have more diverse types of data that you want to consider as well. For example, learning to rank features or metadata of documents or uh, knowledge graph information and all these things, they are um, more often being used for uh, ranking uh, functions. And uh, what also happens is that often uh, a ranking system um, selects like 1,000 candidates and then another system continues with it and then they re-rank it. And often in this re-ranking step, these different types of features are also being used. So our idea is to propose PCB, which aims to achieve uh, the following functionalities. So it's easy to install. It's a self-contained type Python package and uh, working with the different collections should be as easy as possible. And um, we do fully support first stage ranking. Uh, specifically, we do support PM25 for now. So you can just run uh, PM25 uh, ranking in only a couple lines of code and uh, yeah, then first stage ranking is complete. And then it's immediately served in a useful format. Um, if the output is found as data frames, so it's quite easy to use this output directly. Speak up a bit. <coughs> to use this output directly and um, use it for re ranking stages. For example, in transformers, where often these more uh, dense embeddings are being used, if you have these directly in your output arrays, you can re rank them. Uh, uh, and have a for load stage ranking. And um, what we also support is data exploration to, through both SQL and a graph query language based on Cypher, which is the graph query language uh, by Neo4j. So we start from uh, the idea of using databases for information retrieval. So in the work by Mobison et al, they uh, implemented beam 25 search in a relational database. So basically what they have is three tables. They had a documents table and a terms table, and then one table that joined these document tables and these terms tables with each other. And um, this allowed uh, them to express uh, easy back of words uh, ranking functions. So um, what they did in this paper specifically is implement DM25 in a relational database. And they showed that uh, in terms of efficiency, they were able to rank uh, on par with uh, other custom-made efforts indexes. And, um, but which, how you can also see this is like uh, as a graph, like a gro property graph. So on the left side, you have this uh, database schema, but on the right side, you have more like a graph schema and they are uh, very similar. So on the left side, you can see the document uh, noted uh, and on the right side, the term nodes. And they are um, connected to each other if a term uh, appears in a document. So what we are basically doing is we think about tables as, uh, instead of tables, we think about graphs. So on the left side, you can see uh, the tables that, uh, that you are need to express this ranking function. On the right side, you see the graph that corresponds to these tables. So um, instead of, thinking about tables, we think about graphs. And then um, we, we, we express nodes in a graph as normal database tables. And then um, the edges in a the graph, they are uh, represented by many to many joint tables. So uh, multiple edges can also be pre present between two nodes. For example, if you want to uh, use position data. And um, we, we also have some metadata in the database to um, to know how different types of nodes relate to each other. So in this case, uh, we have uh, metadata that says, well, documents and terms, they relate to each other through this, uh, um, through this joint table. And this is especially needed if you have multiple types of data, but we will come back to that later. So, uh, our system is built on top of DuckDB. DuckDB is a embeddable, uh, OLAP database uh, system developed by CWI. It's focused uh, on and it's analytics optimized and it's embeddable, which means it runs an application process. 
So this is ideal for um, our application. So, um, and it's especially nice for Python because Panda data frames can be seen as virtual tables and um, Duckett here runs most of the time on the same data representation as these Panda data frames. So it's zero copy. Uh, it's directly possible to materialize these as NumPy arrays. So then we can immediately ship them away if we want to do some real ranking. And DuckDB is as well easy to install using this uh, uh, using PIP. So uh, because DuckDB is a relational database, we can just express BM25 exactly the same as before. So we implemented BM25 just as in paper as full license at all. Um, but instead of using a, a conjunctive variant, we used the implemented the exact um, pro, uh, BM25 version as proposed um, by Robinson and all. So then we uh, support Cypher. So Cypher is a basic graph. Uh, we support a basic graph pattern national queries. So Cypher is a graph uh, query language, uh, origin developed by Neo4j, and it's a graph query language specifically for property graphs. So um, using this uh, this language, you can more easily express express graph queries and think about the data as graphs. So to give an example, uh, on the top you can see a Cypher query, um, and what this does is it she finds all documents that were written by the same author as um, the query document. So it's in only uh, three lines, uh, you can uh, find all the uh, different documents. And it's even possible, for example, to do uh, um, this where condition uh, in, in as, a, uh, as a field condition in the first line. So we could even do this in only two lines of cipher. And on the other end, on the bottom, you can see sepal. And here you, you need four joints to, uh, to, to make these uh, connections from the author to the document and back to this many to many joint table. And this sepal query, yeah, it's, it's a bit more messy than the cipher query. So we think that using these cipher queries, it's more easy to uh, think on how data relates to each other. Uh, yeah, so this is an example on how you can, for example, find the length of a document. Uh, it's it's quite uh, easy to express uh, your information in the cipher. Um, so, how do you use these to be? Uh, well, as I said, it's easy to install. You can just use pip install, and uh, it, it can start working. And it's also possible to install the latest version through GitHub. Um, so, what we did is we uh, wanted to use these to be for the background linking class um, as uh, by track. So we use the Washington VG uh, collection, and uh, this has about 700, 600,000, 670,000 uh, news articles published by Washington Post between 10, 12 and 2020, and they are they have 50 topic articles with that expression. So um, in the background linking class, you have given a given a, a news article, you have to find relevant background info. So um, authors can have written multiple articles. And if you have a, a news article for which you have to find relevant background info, it might be nice to consider uh, which other documents uh, were written by the same author. So we um, also extracted author information and we found 25,703 authors. And then we also uh, annotated the document collection uh, using the run entity linker. So, uh, and link entities contain position information, mention information, and a uh, named entity recognition tag. And then, um, yeah, well, you get something like this. This is an example graph for the background linking task. So, as you can see, there, there, there are documents, they have terms. Uh, terms relate to documents uh, through a uh, edge that has uh, term frequency information, there are entity information, and there's other information. And then we can um, yeah, easily express these types of queries. So I, what I wanted to do was uh, do a, a live demonstration, but given this hybrid uh, setting, I just made some screen shots and put them in the slides. 
so it's easier, so it will be fine. I so, <laughs> yeah, no worry. And um, so, first, data loading. It's quite easy. In only a couple of lines, you can just load the data in the database and start working with it. Um, and the archetypes are loaded similarly. Well, you also need to add some metadata information, but there are supporting classes for this. And, um, well, just to show how you can uh, easily um, do a BM25 ranking, you can just import searcher, then connect uh, with the database, say, I want 1,000 hits, and uh, issue a query. And uh, as you can see, the output is a bundle of data frames with uh, the collection ID and score. Um, so you can also easily inspect the data using SQL. You can just issue a SQL query and see how many documents are in the collection. Works also quite easy. Um, we can use cipher queries. So let's say we want we have a document. This is the uh, document that we found as the uh, number one document in the BM25 query, and we uh, want to find the top five tier IDF terms. We can just um, issue this. Uh, cipher query uh, and say, well, for, give give for these terms in this uh, uh, in this document, uh, order them by TF IDF, and then uh, give me the top five. And as you can see, there are uh, five uh, terms uh, returned. Um, another example: Let's say we uh, want to find uh, the documents written by the co-authors of the author of this uh, source article, well, we can just uh, do this pattern matching. So we we, we say, well, uh, for this document, find all, find all documents written by the same author. And for all these documents, find all uh, the documents written by all the authors, because documents can have multiple authors. And as you can see, um, it returns 2,700 uh, different news articles. And uh, I, I showed the first five, but it's quite easy to do data exploration in this way using these uh, graph queries. So for future work, we want to, um, and we have a foreign proof we want to pursue. So we want to do extended support for Cypher. Right now we do basic uh, pattern matching support, and um, but uh, we also want to support, for example, data loading and such. But that's um, we do that now through uh, SQL still. And we want to uh, support uh, more IR functionality. So more first stage rankers, more uh, collection support, uh, more uh, or more the native document processing, because now we use uh, already pre-processed um, documents. And do more benchmarking and also support uh, dense graph representation, which are uh, really popular right now. So this is uh, what we want to pursue in the future. So uh, are there any questions? I had one. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for this presentation. Uh, I'm really interested in this uh, connection between IR and graph databases, especially, and, and the background linking um, uh, task. <laughs> It's funny enough because I wanted exactly to use Cypher in that task, and I tried just to learn Cypher a few years ago. And I hit a problem. Because, well, at that time, I wanted to use DBpedia in Cypher to match entities and find paths between entities that I might use for the trivial purposes. And one thing that I noticed is that Cypher can be very slow in some uh, cases where you have a big graph and the path that you use, as, as you showed, has no labels in the, on the edges. Because in that case, th there might be many, many matches. And so all the efficiency of graph databases somehow fade away. So what's your take on this? What, on efficiency, other problems? Uh, what's your experience? Yeah, so um, I also used uh, this Neo4j implementation for Cypher initially. And that was also quite slow for what I tried, but I think that's mostly because Neo4j focuses on these transactional queries and uh, also on very small subgraphs. And for IR, you want to do, you have to do yeah, a lot of documents that you want to analyze. I think um, this implementation might be faster for IR specifically. Uh, for now, 
this graph is still quite easy. So there's only one edge type between two uh, types of nodes, but uh, we want to support that uh, in the future as well. And, but I think uh, this could be faster than uh, than a transactional focus database like uh, the native chain. So two things, uh, you, and then I'm passing the word to others. Uh, you don't have multiple labels on, in, in the graphs for edges, right? Yes. So, okay, the query without labels there, basically you, you could have written the label and yeah. the same, okay? And then you say the specific implementation of the DBMS is what is making the difference with respect to Neo4j. Yeah, I expect, I expect so, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Great, great. Uh, I'll try it out. That's, that's very, very interesting. Yeah, that was first. Oh, I don't, I don't. Look at some of the rates right now. Oh, also, I don't. Okay. Okay, so uh, you can. Yeah. Um, I have. Uh, I assume you're related. Uh, I think it. that you have to take off the mask. <laughs> you better sit down. So. Okay. Sorry. So I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Uh, so you have this graph representation, and based on this graph representation, have you thought about also to use it as query term expansion and also for relevance feedback? Yeah, we have thought about it, but we have not done anything with it yet. But this is a logical extension of uh, our work because you can, for example, look at clicks in the graph and see how uh, or how query terms relate to specific documents and in that way do some uh, pseudo relevance feedback, for example, because you know which terms are close to each other uh, through documents. Yeah. And I, I think it should be uh, quite easy to extend. Uh, or actually express these uh, reference feedback uh, queries uh, through Cypher. Yeah. So, hi. Uh, first of all, thanks for the great presentation. Um, I have just a very short question. So, I saw you were loading CSVs into your your database. Um, my question is, I couldn't really see where you define the schema. Do you have a separate file for that, or? Um, yeah, so the, you... that's what I meant with the metadata. So we have um, we have the schema defined uh, in, in in a uh, separate table, and you can just update the schema uh, accordingly. But um, yeah. From there, yeah. <laughs> Very interesting talk, and I want to ask you something that I don't think you talk a lot about, which is the exploration. So in the Davis community, there's a lot of work on exploring data sets. I think in IR, it's something that we're missing as part of the community, and would be awesome to explore IR data, and I would like to get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think something like this query language will enable people to do more easy exploration and especially in things like knowledge graphs it can be really useful to understand how this graph is um yeah how the nodes are related to each other and then think more about um yeah what, what, what information you can use to express more uh, complex ranking functions and yeah i, I think it uh, can be useful are you going to demo it later um, I offline in the coffee break. In the coffee break, sure. There is one question online. There is a question online because I don't. <laughs> Somebody can read it. Well, David, right online. Can you 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 can take the word. I can also. Uh, close the well, there was a race hand, but maybe. Hello. Hi. Hi. I'm just turning my camera on. Huh? Yeah, go on. Yeah, we don't hear you. Yeah, okay, 
David is ready for next presentation, but maybe Jimmy has a question from home. I just see. Yeah. No, I think Okay. What's the bird story? <laughs> so, so this experimental, Jimmy, so uh, we don't have to use birds in this thing. <laughs> okay, thank you. Let me ask you to choose Chinese. So the, the database on the back end is a main memory database. That's why it does all up and all the things and does it come with scalability issues. Uh, so yeah, DoopDB is still quite uh, a new database. It's an active development. So um, for this experiment, it worked quite well. But uh, well, yeah, I could guess this can fit in memory easily on some bigger machine. But yeah. Uh, it may, uh, so I did the development mostly on AWS and there it got okay. fitted quite easily. Uh, and the other thing is, can you do efficient stock K retrieval on this? Or do you, do you have to fully rely on the backend for that? I mean, it's nice to generate a, well, a set of millions and then limit five, uh, sort it and limit five. Well, it's reasonably fast to do like top thousand. Yeah. But the limit is, at the physical level, the limit is uh, executed. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it's actually pushed down in the yeah. optimizer. Yeah. And the DuckDB people are focusing on analytics. So yeah. they work a lot with yeah. R and with Python yeah. uh, libraries. So they are focusing on this type of queries that we issue yeah. to improve those. Yeah. So that's only drill down filtering that kind of thing. Ordering, yeah. Okay, looks very great.